beautiful people welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be about getting a guide dog because lately a lot of you guys have been asking me questions about getting a guide dog like the process of it how it works the waiting process what it's like etc 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 and instead of answering all those questions individually i thought i would make a video about what it's like to get a guide dog how it works the process the ins and outs of it but i want to say before i get into this video that my personal experience of having a guide dog and getting a guide dog is not going to be the same as yours. Guide dogs in the United Kingdom work differently to how they might work in, say, America or Canada or Germany or France, wherever they might have, have guide dogs, wherever else in the world. I can't answer those questions if you're from a different part of the world, but I can give you a bit of a backstory of what it's like to get a guide dog and what sort of thing to expect. So anyway, I'm going to get straight into it and I really, really hope you enjoy it. First of all, I want to begin by just saying that a, you do not have to be fully blind to have a guide dog. That is a big common myth about guide dog owners, that they are all blind, which is not true. You can be partially sighted, you can have nystagmus, you can have limited vision, you can have limited vision in both eyes. You don't have to be fully blind in the UK to get a guide dog and to qualify for a guide dog, and you don't even have to be technically registered as blind or visually impaired but obviously it is better if you are registered as one of the two and you can be from any sort of age from around 12 upwards and if you're younger you can get these things called buddy dogs i'm not going to talk about that in this video but i'll leave the link to the website of the guide dogs page so if you want to go and check out any information then you can do and also you don't have to pay for guide dogs uh, if you are in a financial position where you can't really afford things like vet bills and food bills you don't have to worry about it because guide dogs as a charity do take care of it here in the uk so first of all is you have to apply for a guide dog. So you might want to call them, you might want to apply online, or you might want to get referred to by your local authority. So your local mobility instructor from your local council might want to refer you to guide dogs. Either way, it doesn't really matter which you choose, it's going to be the same outcome at the end of the day. You're then what will happen after that is a member of your local mobility team from guide dogs will come and speak to you. This might be a guide dog trainer, this might be a mobility instructor, it might be a habilitation worker from guide dogs. They will come to your house, they will tell you a little bit about guide dogs, what they do, how they work, some of the kind of expectations that you might have about guide dogs. They'll ask you a bit about your mobility, how you are getting out and about, your sight loss, your medical condition, etc, etc, etc. They'll want to initially see your home where the dog might be living and it's just generally to get a feel of what it's like to have a guide dog just so they can get to know you and vice versa so please don't think after that like bam you're going to be given a cute dog it does not work like that it's a long process well it's a very worthwhile process next part after you've had this initial assessment you will have to fill out a medical declaration form and if you want to continue you will then go on to the next stages so usually what happens after this is you will be trained with a long cane with a mobility instructor because one of the paramount things about having a guide dog is you must 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 be long cane trained if you're not using a long cane and your sight means that you should be using one then you're gonna have to be trained using a long cane because the reason is if you don't have another mode of getting out and about and getting mobile if your guide dog say for instance becomes unwell or you, they are in between getting you another guide dog so your old guide dog retires and your new guide dog is not here yet you're going to need to still get out and about and they are not going to want to leave you in the lurch so they will be sure that you have another mode of getting out and about and being confident with mobility i had to be trained with a long cane i didn't like it but i, would, I still did it because at the end of the day if i didn't i wouldn't have been given a guide dog it's worth it at the end of the day and it's a skill you'll always have and after that what will happen is usually you'll be visited, visited a few times by some mobility instructors some guide dog trainers and what they will do is they will bring with them a guide dog harness but alas there's no cute guide dog attached to the end of it i'm afraid it's basically just a harness what they will do is they will then take you out on a walk with the harness they'll hold it in their hand and they will basically simulate what it's like to have a guide dog and how it basically works you are going to feel a bit like a fool going good girl straight on or good boy straight on no don't you do that don't you sniff that branch or oh is a good girl where's the curb because there's not going to be a guide dog at the end of it that people can be like oh that's a guide dog they're going to be like there is a person talking to another person holding a harness and they're looking quite weird. But don't worry about it, it's something all of us guide dog owners have to go through to get a guide dog. So they'll basically show you some of the kind of commandments that you'll have with the guide dog. So forward, back, straight on, find left, find right, find the curb, etc, etc, etc. It's not going to be as in depth as it would be with a, like a proper training session, but it's just a kind of general thing to get you used to the feel of having a guide dog, how they work, 
how the straight line principle works, which is a principle where they will only go in straight lines and they'll walk up to curbs and they'll do a left turn, right turn, back turn. And it's just to get you used to how to use a guide dog and what it's going to be like. When you come back after the walk or walks you might have, they will say, how do you feel about it? Do you want to continue? If you say yes, then they'll be like, right, okay, jobs are good and you're ready to go. And then what will happen after that is you will go on what's called a residential training session. So this usually happens in a hotel. Of course, it might not be the same in all districts. It might only be certain ones that do it. But nine times out of 10, you will be taken to a hotel with a group of other potential guide dog owners who will then be given uh, guide dogs to like to try out. So it's like a taster session. So you'll go there, you'll meet the people you'll meet the mobility instructors, meet the staff you'll be working with and you will be given around three guide dogs to work with throughout the 24 hour training session and you'll be taught things like grooming, you'll be shown things like obedience, feeding them, caring for their maintenance, you'll do some walks with them so you'll go out on a walk with each of these dogs and they'll all have generally different walking speeds, different kind of temperaments so that the guide dog instructors can see how you work with different dogs, what dog will be the best for you, how you work, how you walk, how your body confidence is how you walk in terms of when you have a guide dog on a harness but they are a giving you the opportunity to try it out with a real life guide dog that is going to potentially be going to another owner so you can actually see yes this is something i want to do but also they are calculating what your walking speed is how you work your temperament your walking nature how confident you are how mobile you are because they are going to have to put that all into an assessment so that they can match you with the right dog guide dogs are usually matched to a person in terms of how big they are what their temperament is like how confident they are if they're a first time guide dog owner they're usually trying to give you quite a mellow dog usually I mean that might not be the same for all guide dog owners of course but they need to make sure that they're giving you the right dog so that's why partly they have these things called training sessions and taster days with guide dogs after you've done all that they will then come and see you the instructors and they will say how did you find it what did you find useful about it what was it like for you do you have any comments and they will tell you their feedback so they'll say yes we think you're ready for a guide dog we think you're ready to go on the waiting list for a guide dog they're not there to give you hard sell they're not there to really rigorously test you they are there to make sure that you're safe and that you are mobile as you possibly can be so what will happen after that if you say yes i want to go ahead with the guide dog is you'll go on the waiting list you'll probably be given more mobility training by the instructors at guide dogs so like the mobility instructors just so that you can get out and about on routes and so you get more confident if you like me you wasn't really confident before having a guide dog but they did a lot of mobility training with me to get me confident it depends on where you are in the country, depending on where you are and what your needs are, how long it's going to take to get a guide dog. So for me personally, it was about 18 months. They needed to get me a guide dog relatively quickly and after I'd finished my A-levels because I was about to go to university and they said, we need to get you a dog before you go to university so you can train with the dog so that you're used to having this guide dog so when you go to university you're going to be confident with it so I was very 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 lucky because they got a guide dog just in time I got a guide dog actually the day after my 18th birthday I got the call to say that I was going to be getting a guide dog and they told me a bit about her what she was like her temperament some people might have to go for one to two matches sometimes the first match doesn't always work sometimes it does it just depends on the dog and how you are but usually guide dogs are very good at matching dogs to their owner so it's going to be fine so then what they'll do is they'll come around with a guide dog and they'll let you meet the guide dog initially. They'll show you what she's like or, or he of course she or he's like, their temperament. They'll just let you genuinely meet and greet the dog and let the family also meet her or him. If you've got any pets, they'll of course need to assess that and how the dog acts with the pets. We had two cats and we've also got a dog and they had to see how the dog was around those and how they interacted. I mean, the cats didn't like her initially. Freddie was okay about it. He didn't like it, but he was just fine about it. He was just a little tough little soldier, but he's fine with her now, bless him. And then obviously it's just going to be about you meeting the dog and just seeing how the dog interacts with you. And Unity was absolutely amazing. She was such a sweethearted dog. You know, she came in, she had a little nose around the garden because it was very hot in the summertime. She came over and said hello to me. She said hello to the family and then after that after they said hello and just got settled in the trainer will usually want to take you out on a walk with the dog so they might want to put an, a second lead on the dog if you're not very confident with walking or if the dog's a bit more cheeky or if the dog's known for not really trusting people that they first met because after all this is a new partnership they've just met you they're not going to work 100% usually they're going to be like who the hell are you like you're not my trainer but for me personally I didn't have that unity was absolutely amazing she was really good on the lead 
we didn't need to put the second lead on her she just walked independently with me and my guide dog trainer said this is absolutely great you two are really well suited you're the right sort of walking speed for each other you're both very fast walkers you seem very comfortable around each other you seem very at ease with each other so I think this is going to be a go ahead so as you can imagine best 18th birthday present a girl could have ever got are getting a guide dog so then what will happen after this is you might need to go to a hotel to train with your dog or you might stay at home I stayed at home because I had a lot of reading to do before my university degree started and also because of my medical condition the guide dogs team didn't want to put me into a stressful situation they wanted me to be at home with my family so they said right what we're going to do is we're going to let you stay at home with the dog and we're going to come to you every single day and train with you you might have to go to a hotel on class with a few other people but take it from me don't be scared of that it's fine lots of my friends who've got guide dogs have done that and they say it's a great experience and if you're able to do it you should try it out because even though you're away from your family you get to meet really cool other people that are going to be having a guide dog too and you're in a new surrounding new environment and it's really fun so don't be afraid by that prospect if it's going to be an option open to you so then what will happen it's usually at about three to four weeks you will be trained with a dog sometimes it might be a bit more it's never usually less than three weeks minimum I'd say because they have to teach you a lot in that time so they have to teach you things like grooming obedience they have to show you how to look after the dog cleaning ears how to to, you know groom their fur how to look for any sort of marks or bumps anything that you know you need to look out for they'll tell you a bit about the temperament of the dog what the dog's like because they've obviously they've been working with this dog for about six months they'll tell you a bit about the dog's history they'll tell you a bit about how the dog behaves and walks they'll take you out for walks they'll train you to know all the certain routes that you go on they'll show you basic commandments you need to know they will teach you discipline like how to discipline your dog if they misbehave they'll teach you how to get into a spending routine with your dog they will just generally guide you for all the things you need to know about so anything from how to get out and about with your dog to things like how to care for the dog in a home obviously I'm not going to talk about that all in depth now because every guide dog trainer works slightly differently they're probably all going to have the same generic foundation that they go on with rules and kind of things so they say things like how to feed the dog how it works for recall how to get your dog to come back in, in obedience in the park but they might have little different methods of doing it so one trainer might say that you need to give your dog praise to get them to work well some guide dog trainer might say you need to give them treats I mean my guide dog work really well with treats but every guide dog trainer and every guide dog is different so it's going to be different depending on what dog you have and every experience is going to be different so after that initial three to four weeks then what's going to happen after that you'll get signed up under a vet in your local area you'll be given a qualification pack you'll have to sign a form you will have to be given a guide dog harness and the guide dog badge and you know all the kind of general sort of equipment you'll need like the grooming equipment the feeding equipment etc 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 the recall whistle you're going to sign the form to say yes i am taking responsibility of this guide dog uh, you have to sign a form to say that you agree to the terms and conditions like you can't be drunk and disorderly with your guide dog you can't be you know you can't put your guide dog under any sort of danger so if you're out in a public place and you're not too sure about crossing the road you have to make sure that you are able to ask for help or that you can assess the situation to keep you and your guide dog safe because at the end of the day they've given you this wonderful dog and you have to ensure the dog's safety as well as the dog has to ensure your own because it's a partnership you've got to take care of this dog as much as this dog's got to take care of you but also you've got to do the work you've got to take care of them you've got to do all the sort of the general kind of things they might ask you to take part in a case study guide dogs or to take part in some activities my guide dog was a sponsor puppy so I was in a lot of photo shoots I was in a radio advert, I was in um, TV appearances, I've done like things for magazines and a lot of newspapers so I have been thrown into sort of the front line of guide dogs so alas if you ever go to a guide dogs event you probably are going to see my face unfortunately and Unity's as well which is not so unfortunate. Another thing to mention is that you will have to pay 50p initially for the charge of a guide dog, they charge 50p and that's it. You can agree to pay for their food and their vet bills if you want to but if you can't afford it then you don't have to feel under pressure. I mean we have paid for our food but we don't pay for the vet bills obviously because it's too much with my student funding and stuff but if you want to you can but equally don't feel under pressure if you can't afford it you can give a bigger donation to initially when you get, get given your guide so i didn't give just the 50p i gave 50 pounds just a donation to say thank you for giving me this amazing beautiful guide dog but you don't have to if you can't afford it don't feel under pressure you can always do a lots of volunteering activities if you can't afford the physical cold hard cash you can always do things like coffee mornings etc etc if you want to volunteer with guide dogs so then what will happen after that is you will 
work with a guide dog they will come back for a follow-up visit for about after about two weeks after you, you've been partnered with the guide dog just to see how you're doing to make sure that you are okay with the dog that the dog's behaving well the dog's working well they might need to give you more training for things they want to go out on a walk with the guide dog to see how you two are doing just kind of general things to check up on you but don't feel that they are going to be there in the wings just waiting to get, for an opportunity to take your guide dog away because they're not like that they are honestly not they just want to make sure you and the guide dog are safe that is the most important thing because I've heard a lot of the general public sometimes say to me oh that they are always wanting to take guide dogs away and that they are really sort of strict about it they're not at the end of the day they just need to make sure that the guide dog owner and the guide dog is safe and that they're working well so they will probably come for another one to two visits after that so it will be a three month visit and then a six month visit and then usually they come to visit you every single year guide dogs work for about eight to ten years of their life up to they're about ten years old depending on what kind of dog they are and where they live and how often they have to work but usually they work for about 10 years and then they retire but obviously I'm not going to get into that because I don't know about that side of things yet because my doggy's not retired yet then you're given your ticket to freedom and you can go and live your life and be happy so I'll just finish up here by saying if you want any more information you can visit www.guidedogs.org.uk and I also just want to take this time to say thank you so much to Guide Dogs UK who have been a massive supporter of me and who have really changed my life and of course to my amazing beautiful Guide Dog Unity who is going to be five next month I can't believe it and I'll have spent three amazing years with her I can't believe it I'm going to be graduating with her in the next few days she's going to be walking me up on the stage to collect my degree and I've just had the most amazing time she's given me so much freedom so much confidence so much love and I can honestly say that if any of you are thinking about having a guide dog and you think it could improve your mobility go into it of course go into it with your eyes open and be aware of everything you need to know but I can guarantee you you will never look back so thank you all very much for watching today i really hope this has helped you and given you some information if you've got any questions please feel free to comment down below and let me know and if i can't answer them i'll point you to guide dogs who will be able to answer your questions and i really hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in my next video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will catch you guys next time